Hello everyone. I'm Mansoor Ahmad. I teach radiology at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. In this series of videos, we'll review multiple intraoral radiographs as a part of the summer interpretation seminar course for D3 students at the University of Minnesota. These images will create the basic knowledge for intraoral radiographic interpretation exercises in the fall and spring semester. We will spend about 5 or 6 minutes in reviewing this single periapical radiograph. As a part of description, you will begin with identifying the image as a mandibular left molar periapical radiograph. As part of the identification, you will also mention any technical error. On this radiograph, the epices are not completely recorded. For a periapical radiograph, it is essential to completely record the epices. However, this image is more about the cervical areas. So this is an acceptable diagnostic image even though the periapical area is not recorded. You may have acquired a bite-wing radiograph for the same purpose. On this image, we see loss of root structure on, in the cervical region. This premolar and molar have resorption on the mesial and distal aspects. The loss of tooth structure is a few millimeters into the root. One interesting finding is the alveolar crest is well defined and corticated. This is the contact point between the two molars and the loss is about 3 to 4 mm apical from the contact point. In review, we have seen loss of cervical tooth structure both on the mesial and distal. We also saw that the losses are several millimeters from the contact points. We also saw that the interproximal alveolar ridges are intact and corticated. So with this information, we can develop a differential diagnosis. In differential diagnosis, obviously we have to consider proximal caries. If we consider it as abrasion, we have to think about dental floss trauma, and also toothpick trauma. Less likely, but we should consider chemical erosion. So can this be cervical caries? As we mentioned earlier, interproximal caries occurs a few millimeters from the contact points. These radiographic features do not conform to proximal caries. Can these tooth structure losses be from aggressive use of dental floss? When you forcefully use dental floss, the distal surfaces of the teeth are damaged. There is no way you can put force on the mesial surface of the posterior teeth with dental floss. Can these tooth structure losses be from toothpick trauma? Toothpick trauma can be on the mesial and distal. Toothpick trauma will also damage alveolar crest. The tooth is much harder than the alveolar bone. It is not possible that the toothpick will only damage the tooth and spare the bone. Can this be chemical erosion? No. Chemical erosion is mostly on the buccal and lingual surfaces, not in the proximal surfaces. So what is the diagnosis of this condition? The condition is called the way it is seen, multiple idiopathic cervical root resorption or MICR, multiple idiopathic cervical root resorption. These are some papers that are helpful as further reading about multiple idiopathic cervical root resorption. Thank you very much. I'll see you again with another video.